Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Zach? Yeah? Okay. Good, good. It is, man. Now I'm getting ready to hear a beat, man. I'm going to be really good. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the body of Jesus Christ for you this morning. I invite you, whether it's a, a donut or it's a cracker or it's a piece of bread, to go grab that so that during our communion time you can ingest that, that bread, that, that element. And, and then also grab what represents the blood of Jesus. It might be uh, juice, it might be milk, water, orange juice, or grape juice. Uh, grab that. Go grab that now while we're singing our opening song so that you'll be ready for the Holy Communion meal. Amen? We come this morning knowing that we are not ours, 
we are not ours. Oh, Sister Smith, one of the saints in my home church used to always say, Lord, I didn't choose you, you chose me. And so we come reminding ourselves that God has chosen us. I am thine, O oh Lord, I am thine. We belong to God this morning, so let us sing our opening song. hour. We just come in this hour to spend some time with you, to spend some precious and some sacred time that we might be reminded that we are loved, that we might find a sense of your peace. Lord, we come in the beauty of your holiness. Let us keep singing. the Lord. Let us come worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Oh, 
Because the Lord gives us the best of himself. Amen. We don't want to shortchange the Lord this morning. We want to worship him with our mind, body, and soul. Amen. Amen. And one of the ways that we worship the Lord is we come acknowledging that we need him. We need him. We need him every day. We need him every hour. And Lord God, we just come acknowledging that you are God. Lord God, we, we come acknowledging that you brought us through another week. We come acknowledging that it was you who touched us with a hand to wake up or gave us the ears to hear our alarm clock go off, Lord God. We just thank you. We thank you that, that you are God. We thank you that you are there 24 seven for us to come to the throne of grace and the throne of mercy to, to say thank you, to, to confess to you our shortcomings, to confess to you our faults, to confess to you where it is we messed up this week and asked you for yet another chance, Lord God. Lord God, we, we know you to be a God of third and fourth and fifth chances that you give us a clean slate, Lord God. And, and so we're thankful. We're thankful that we can say we're not perfect, but we're going on to perfection. So help us to grow in, in faithfulness. Help us to grow in maturity. Help us to grow in love this day, Lord God. Lord God, we need you. We all need you in our own way, Lord God. We all need you in our own way because, Lord God, we all have different needs. We all have different shortcomings. But what we have in common is our need for you. But Lord God, you tell us nothing is impossible for you. That we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so Lord God, we come asking that you would help our unbelief. Help our doubts. 
Help us trust you just a little bit more this week. Touch our eyes that we might see you. We might see you anew. We might see you afresh. We might see you in action. We might see you answering our prayers or someone's prayers. Come touch our ears that we might hear you speak a word to us as individuals, us as a church, us as a nation. Lord God, we need you to get through this pandemic. We need you to overcome the systemic racism. We need you to overcome homelessness. We need you to heal our bodies, to revive our spirits. Lord God, this morning we come praying for our brother Roush Grant. We come praying for our sister Jan Reed, who had a couple of days in the hospital and is now home. Come praying for our sister Janelle Walton, continuing to heal from her surgery. Come praying for our sister Val Jean. Lord God, touch your mind, touch your body, even as she's away from the church and the community, Lord God, we know that she's not away from you. And so hold her in your care and give her wisdom to make the decisions that she needs to make. We come praying for our sister Arnell Green. Your healing hand will continue to be upon her. We come praying for our brother John Green. Lord God, we thank you that he's just getting stronger every day and he's testifying to your goodness and your mercy and your healing powers. And Lord God, as he prepares to move from a rehab, Lord, provide the help that he needs to keep him strong. Lord God, we pray for our sister Gladys Perry that cares for so many and helps so many. Lord God, be with her in her time of need. Be with her as she prepares for the journey ahead. Lord God, we thank you for our sister Aileen Gillum, 100 years strong. Lord God, we thank you for her faithful witness. May we just continue to check in on her, Lord God. to learn from her. Oh, she has so much experience and so many stories, so much wisdom. Lord God, we thank you for our living saints. We thank you for our living saints. We need you. that might be living on the edge others that are doubting or clinging to hope and Lord God will be careful to give you the glory the honor and the praise in the precious name of Jesus the Christ we pray and we sing I need thee every hour I need
sing I need thee every hour and we do but I just want us to continue to be in a moment of prayer a time of prayer because it's not just us that need the Lord every hour your neighbor on the right side of you and your neighbor on the left side of you and your neighbor across the street from you, they need the Lord also. Everyone on your block needs the Lord. And so we want to just pray for our neighbors and, and pray for our block and pray for our community right now. You might know your neighbors by name. You might know them by face. But take a moment to pray for them. If you don't know their name, maybe this week, when you see them, you'll, you'll say, J just tell me your name so that we might feel more connected. Tell me your name because I've been praying for you and I want to pray for you by name. The Lord knows your name, but I want to know your name. Take a moment to pray for your co-workers. For your barber, your beautician, the banker, the grocery store clerk. Take a moment to pray for the essential workers. Our medical personnel, our firefighters or police officers. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Hear our prayers. always have the spirit of intercessory prayers that we pray for one another. And Lord God, we give you thanks for those that pray for us. Those that we know pray for us and for those that we don't know that are praying for us. We thank you because there's power in prayer. There's relationship in prayer. Change comes about because of prayer. And so we thank you for this sacred opportunity. In Jesus' name. 
In the matchless name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, hear our prayers. Amen and amen. It's offering time. It's offering time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to try that a third time. It's offering time. Okay, now we got some energy. Amen. Amen. Thanks to God. It's always good to return thanks to God. It's our way of saying thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for helping me to be a blessing to others. We received a thank you note. Thank you very much for your generous donation to our scholarship fund. You have helped to further the education of graduating high school seniors of the West Contra Costa County, California. Sincerely, Michelle Jackson, Chair of the Scholarship Committee of the El Cerrito Branch of the NAACP. Lord, you call us every day. to give of our time, our talents, our gifts, our financial resources. We don't always know how someone will be blessed. You do. Maybe it's not our job to always know, but it's our job to give with generous and kind and loving hearts. And so we thank you for this opportunity to click on the giving button to give through PayPal or to write a check to Easter Hill to pay our offerings and tithes. We thank you for this recent special offering you had for Native American Ministry Sunday to raise money for scholarships for our Native American brothers and sisters. Lord God, every good and perfect gift comes from you. And so we thank you for this opportunity to give. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Oh, let the children come. Let the children come. Let the children come. Let the children come. Good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone, especially all the children that are listening this morning and some of the parents. I struggled with what to talk about this morning, but it kept going back to salvation, mm -hmm. the Come word on. salvation. Yeah. And I looked it up in the dictionary, on everywhere. And it's from the Latin word salvatio, and I'm sure I could say it differently from salva, which means safe, yeah. or to be saved. Yeah. Preservation or deliverance from harm. Yeah. I think we all wanna not be harmed. We all wanna be safe from harm, yeah. ruin. We don't wanna be ruined in life, kids. You, we wanna be saved from being ruined or lost. Right. We don't wanna lose anything. We don't wanna lose our lives. Yeah. Deliverance from sin and its consequences believed by Christians, that's us, to be brought about by faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now kids, you think about the word saved and things that we want to be safe and things that you save, like money. You save money to buy something later because you want to be happy later. We save, and you probably save trading cards like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! so that later you can trade them with a friend and be happy. We save food 
You ever have a doggy bag from a restaurant and just eat part of your food and then when you get home, you, you remember that doggy bag? Oh, you're so happy because mm -hmm. you saved it. Ever save a game or a website or save your homework? Mm -hmm. It's because you want it to be there later and the work that you did all that time, you want it to be saved and safe. Now, this is what my Bible says about salvation. Today is the day yes. to be saved. Come on. It says Jesus loves you. <laughs> Did you know that? And he wants you to love him back. Today. He wants to be a part of your life right now. The big book, the Bible says that now is the day of salvation. That means that you don't have to wait until you're grown up. You don't have to wait until, until you have read the whole Bible for yourself. Yeah. You can follow Jesus right now. right now. Today is the day that Jesus saves you. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. Tell Jesus you love him today and praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody. Amen. Amen. Let the children go. Today, today is the day of salvation, and today is the day that we hear from our brother Lavelle Brown as he reads the gospel lesson for this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I shall be reading from John 15, 1 through 8, from the New Revised Standard Version. Jesus, the true vine. I am the true vine. And my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless in you, I'm sorry, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for, for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit mm -hmm. and become my disciples. Yes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
listening to Brother Mark singing and I was picturing the choir and, and, and I was saying Coran Withers, Jesus loves you Kimberly Harvey, Kimberly Nutting Jesus loves you Shirley Roberts, Jesus loves you John Green, Bassey Effion Jesus loves you John McGill, Jesus loves you Looking out over the pews, Nicole Kelly, Jesus loves you. Risha Sims, Jesus loves you. Philip Brooks, Jesus loves you. Sister Barbara, Jesus loves you. Oh, I could call all the names in the congregation to tell you that Jesus loves you. And so I just want you to say right now, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. And don't get it twisted. Jesus loves you because Jesus loves you. Jesus doesn't love you because of anything you've done. Jesus doesn't love you because of who you are. Doesn't love you because of your educational status or your, your socioeconomic status. Doesn't love you because of where you live. Jesus just loves you because Jesus loves you. And all we can do is say thank you, Jesus. All we can do is say thank you, Jesus. And to show Jesus that we're grateful for his love, we, we follow the teachings of Jesus, we walk in the ways of Jesus the Christ. So thank you for loving on us this morning. Thank you for loving on us this morning. Our risen Savior, thank you for salvation. Thank you for your grace. Lord God, we thank you that you love us. Help us to love you more deeply more faithfully. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. And God's people said, Amen. Woo, what a morning. What a morning. God is, God is present and God is blessing. Thank you, Carolyn, for teaching us this morning about God's saving grace. Thank you, Mark, for reminding us that God, that we can know that God loves us through experience. And we're gonna experience some of God's love a little later in the service. This morning, I wanna help us to connect the dots. I want us to know that not only as United Methodists are we connected to other United Methodists around the world, but we are connected to God in all of God's creation. Let us hear these words from the psalmist. Psalm 139, verses 13 through 16. Oh yes, you shaped me first inside, then out. Formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God. Yeah. You're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made. Bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watch me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I had even lived one day. You are wonderfully and marvelously made. And Jesus loves you. At the beginning of our lives, before we entered into the world, 
we were connected to our mother through an umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is a tube that connects the mother and child during pregnancy. It has three blood vessels, one vein that carries food and oxygen from the placenta to the baby, and two arteries that carry waste from the baby back to the placenta. Yes, we are provided for. Yes, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Amen. God provides for us. Place your hand over your heart. Can you feel your heart beating? Blood pumping throughout your body? Without the heartbeat, we can't be connected to life. We have no life with no heartbeat. Without our blood flowing properly to nourish our bodies, we can't be connected to the fullness of life. Thanks be to God for our hearts. Thanks be to God for the blood. Thanks be to God for the breath of life that God has breathed into us that connects us to God and life. Amen. How many of you have done one of those genealogy DNA tests to find out who your people are, who you are connected to, what your ethnic makeup is? It's human nature to want to belong. We are social beings who are meant not to live in isolation, but to live in community, connected and interdependent on one another. Think for a minute about the many connections that you have, and not just your family. In fact, some of your connections may be tighter or closer than your own family members. Picture a tree. You're the trunk. And the branches are your connections. You're connected to your neighbors. You're connected to your coworkers. You're connected to the grocery checker and, and, and to the barber and the beautician. If you're in school, you're connected to your teachers yeah. and your classmates. Yeah. At church, you're connected to your fellow church members, particularly those with whom you're serving on committees or your pew mates or to your shepherds and to others. During this pandemic, through the gift of technology, we have been able to be connected to one another via Zoom or other social media platforms. What organizational connections do you have? Oh, type them into the, the Facebook chat there. Are you a member of a sorority or a fraternity? I know if you are, you're probably typing right away, which, which one? Are you a member of the NAACP or the ACLU? Are you a member of the Y or Toastmasters? Are you a member of a union or the Democratic or the Republican Party? All of these connections involve other people. Contact and communication are needed for them, these connections to thrive and exist. We're also connected to the earth. Our United Methodist Book of Discipline and the Social Principles remind us, remind us of this when it states, in part, all creation is the Lord's, and we are responsible for the ways in which we use and abuse it. Water, air, soil, minerals, energy resources, plants, animals, and space 
are to be valued and conserved because they are God's creation and not solely because they are useful to human beings. We should meet these stewardship duties through acts of loving care and respect. It goes on to say economic, political, social, and technological developments have increased our human numbers and lengthened and enriched our lives. We must recognize the responsibility of the church and its members to place a high pri priority on changes in economic, political, social, and technological lifestyles to support a more ecological, equitable, and sustainable world, leading to a higher quality of life, not for some, but for all of God's creation. Yes, we are connected. Here in the United States, the supply of COVID-19 vaccines is now plentiful. Praise the Lord. In fact, our nation moves so aggressively to ensure enough vaccines for its own people that the one campaign estimated that the federal government has secured 550 million more doses than it needs to cover every American. But in many parts of the world, it's a different story. While almost 43% of the U.S. population has received at least one COVID-19 shot, few other nations are anywhere as close. Overall, only 7.4%, 7.4% of the world's population has had at least one dose of the vaccine. While the global numbers of new cases and deaths have both risen in recent weeks, with reported cases recently passing 800,000 cases per day, my sisters and brothers, the pandemic is not over. We're still in the midst of a pandemic. An unfathomable record high for the pandemic. In India, where just under 9% of the population has received one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, a massive wave of infection and deaths is currently overwhelming the nation's hospitals and crematoriums. On April 1st, the world's second most populous country had 469 COVID deaths daily. On April 28th, India had more than 3,600 deaths daily. Experts predict that India's trajectory will continue to worsen and warn that the true death count is five to ten times what's being reported. We pray for our brothers and sisters in India. We pray for our brothers and sisters here who have relatives and friends that live in India. Lord God, provide healing, provide the vaccine for our brothers and sisters. Adam Russell Taylor of Sojourners writes, in South Africa, which has the highest number of COVID-19 cases on the continent, on the African continent, fewer than 300,000 people, just 0.5% of the country's population has been vaccinated. Less than 1%, 0.5 have been vaccinated. Craig Stewart, who serves as the director of the warehouse, an organization based in Cape Town that equips local churches and advocates uh, to advocate for justice, shared that they have lost friends and colleagues and have experienced neighborhoods facing long-term and complex trauma. Like many others in South Africa, Stewart is concerned about the country's lack of progress in vaccinating its population. While there have been internal capacities and planning issues, the biggest challenge for South Africa has been gaining access to sufficient vaccine supply given that some countries and companies are prioritizing profit over the common good and hoarding supply and production. A big issue. A big issue. Some countries and companies 
prioritizing profits over life. Hoarding supplies and production. Lord, have mercy. Here in the United States, some states have vaccines that are going unused when vaccine shortages exist around the world. At the end of the Black Panther, King T'Challa describes Verbanerum, decides that Verbanerum cannot be hoarded and used primarily for one nation's health and security. It must be shared to ensure the health and security of the entire world. This is the lesson we must take to heart right now. Vaccine formulas and technology must be shared to ensure the health and security of the entire world. As Christians, we must use our voices, our pens, our, our computers, and influence to work tirelessly to ensure that vaccines are available to everyone across our increasingly interconnected and inter interdependent human family. Brother Taylor closes his article encouraging and reminding us we have a moral imperative to help save lives. This imperative is embedded in the very mandate and ethic of our Christian faith to whom much has been given, much is required, Luke 12, 48. Or as the Apostle Paul so po poetically puts it, we must show equal concern for, other, for another because when one part of the body suffers, all parts suffer with it, 1 Corinthians 12, 26. Ensuring people around the world have access to life-saving vaccines is the only way that we will truly defeat COVID-19 and co-create a new global normal that affirms the sacredness of every human life and protects human dignity. Amen? We have work to do. Yes. Truth is, we are also connected to our thoughts and our beliefs. Our thoughts and beliefs influence our behaviors. Oh, we're connected to our past. Our past also informs how we live in the present. Do we see ourselves as living in a community that is disconnected from the state, from the nation, from the world? Or do we see ourselves as part of a global community? In 1967, in his 1967 Massey Lecture number five, also known as his Christmas Sermon on Peace. Dr. King spoke these words, words that have stuck with me for years. It boils down to this, that all life is interrelated. We are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied into a single garment of destiny, what affects one directly affects all indirectly. We are made to live together because of the interrelated, interrelated structure of reality. Did you ever stop to think that you can't leave for your job in the morning without being dependent on most of the world? You get up in the morning and go to the bathroom and reach over for the sponge and that's handed to you by a Pacific Islander. You reach for a bar of soap, and that's given to you at the hands of a Frenchman. And then you go into the kitchen to drink your coffee for the morning, and that is poured into your cup by a South American. And maybe you want tea. That's poured into your cup by a Chinese. Or maybe you desire to have coca for breakfast. And that's poured into your cup by a West African. And then you reach over for your toast. And that's given to you at the hands of an English-speaking farmer, not to mention the baker. And before you finish eating breakfast in the morning, you have depended on more than half of the world. We depend on one another. We depend on one another. 
What does all this have to do with today's scripture? You might be asking. Well, I've tried to demonstrate that we are all connected. Yet there is another way that we are connected. Not only are we human beings, we are also spiritual beings. Jesus said, I am the real vine, and my father is the farmer, the vine dresser. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear fruit, that doesn't bear grapes. And every branch that is grape bearing, he prunes back so that it will bear even more. Jesus is the source of our fruitfulness. He wants us to bear fruit, to produce good works, to be effective in our mission and our ministry and our witness. The truth is we are not as fruitful as we could be. Why? Well, one, the responsibilities of work, home, and family take up most of our time. Two, we don't always make God a priority. God is not always our first thought in the morning, our, 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 our first thought at noontime, our first thought in the evening, our, our, our first thought at bedtime. We focus on the wrong things that take away our attention from God. We might spend too much time watching TV or gossiping instead of praying and reading the Bible. Three, we either don't really believe Jesus lives in us or we take him for granted. Jesus says, live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. Jesus wants us to be connected. It is only through this connection that we can bear more fruit. Jesus wants us to do an inventory and allow him to cut out all that distracts us from him, to prune all that is not helpful in our relationship with him and keeps us from the purposes from which he has called us. This image of God removing every branch in me that bears no fruit is both comforting and convicting. Since the vine was an often used metaphor for the people of Israel in the Old Testament, we know that Jesus' words are both for individuals and for the community. To truly abide, we all need some pruning. Pruning of self. Pruning of our ministries. Pruning is necessary for growth. What ministries does our church need to be pruning so that we can be more fruitful and make more disciples for Jesus as we work to transform our communities in the world in the name of Jesus? If we're not going to be the same when we return to the church, what needs to be pruned? What needs to stop? What needs some pruning so that it can grow? What activities might God be asking you to prune in your own lives? Less news watching? There might be a source of depression because there's so much bad news? Less time on social media so that you have more time for and with Jesus? Do you remember the song Dim Bones? The foot bone connected to the leg bone? The leg bones connected to the knee bone? The knee bones connected to the thigh bone? The thigh bones connected to the hip bone? The hip bones connected to the back bone. The back bones connected to the neck bone. Yeah, I know what y'all thinking about for lunch. Mm -hmm. In the same way, Jesus wants 
all of our being connected to him, mind, body, and soul, just as he is connected to us. Jesus wants us to produce life-giving fruit. We do a lot of stuff throughout the day. But a lot of the stuff we do doesn't amount to a hill of beans. It just takes up time. It, it's not producing any kind of fruit. Definitely not in the name of Jesus. Jesus wants us and desires for us to be mature disciples connected to him. So I ask this question. Out of all of our connections, is Jesus the most important one? Out of all of our connections, is Jesus the most important one? I am the vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. Lord Jesus, work your works of pruning in us so that we will bear more fruit, so that we will glorify your name even more, that we would indeed Make Christ known in our homes, in our neighborhood, and everywhere we go. In Jesus' name, may we stay connected. Amen. Jesus gave a living example of how he dwells in us and we're called to dwell in him. And so we come to this Holy Communion meal, the Lord's Supper. So I invite us into this time of great thanksgiving. And if you haven't gone to get your bread, your cracker, your donut, or whatever represents the body of Jesus Christ. If you haven't gone to get your grape juice or orange juice or milk or water, or whatever represents the blood of Jesus for you this morning, I invite you to do so. Lord God, we just come acknowledging that we've said some things and done some things we shouldn't have. We've missed opportunities to say some things and do some things that you called us to do. And so, Lord God, we ask that you would just forgive us. And we thank you for inviting all of us to this table. Don't have to be United Methodist. Don't have to be baptized. Just have to want to lead a new life and allow Jesus to lead and guide you. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good to give thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. 
by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us, made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, to remain connected to us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, your mighty acts, your salvation, saving acts. In Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And with the boldness and the confidence of the children of God, we pray the prayer that has been prayed down through the centuries, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. body of Christ broken for you and for me I invite you to break a piece and dip it in your cup take and eat take and drink thanks be to God God, we thank you 
for this reminder that we are connected, that you dwell in us and you call us to dwell in you. We thank you for feeding us, for nourishing us, for sustaining us, for blessing us, for loving us. We thank you for this meal. In Jesus' name, amen. Several of you have told me that you've called three people and what a joyous conversations that you've had. So I want to invite you to continue this week to call three more people. It's a way of staying connected. It's a way of encouraging one another. A way of being a blessing to one another. Share your stories of what God has done and is doing for you. Listen with your heart. It's going to be a great month. 
Next Sunday is Mother's Day. On May 23rd, we have the 69th Annual Women's Day. The women are working hard preparing for the program. Want to be in prayer for the planning team. Want to be in prayer for the speaker of that morning, Ms. Michelle Pope, our conference lay leader of the California Nevada Annual Conference. Oh, blessings upon blessings. And so let us go from this place, abiding in God, living in God, and allowing God to live in us. What ways will you stay connected to God this week? Type it on in Facebook. What ways will you stay connected to God this week? Somebody might be looking for a new way to stay connected to God, so type, type how you plan to be connected to God this week. As you do, we're encouraging one another. Let us sing our closing song, Abide With Me. That's our prayer. Abide with me, Lord. Abide with me. some good news when you call on God the line is never busy when you call on God you never get a wrong number the signals not weak you don't have to check how many bars there's a good connection there's a good connection between you and God. Doesn't matter where you are. There's always a good connection between you and God. So stay connected. Stay connected so that you'll stay equipped. You'll stay empowered. And so that you remember who you are and whose you are. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed week. Have a peaceful week. Let it be well with your soul. In Jesus' name, amen.